everybody. Well, it's the start of our show. My next guest is a broadcaster of the Boston Red Sox in Spanish. Please welcome back our good friend, Yuri Berenger. <laughs> improved it. Yeah. Wow. Well, That's ladies cool. and gentlemen, I do have to mention this. We started our program four years ago, and Yuri was our first guest. How about it, everybody? <laughs> Who would have thought we would have made it this far, Yuri? <laughs> well, the band, like I said, the band had uh, play school instruments back then. <laughs> Not yeah. anymore. Most of the band wasn't here, but now we're ready to <laughs> rock. Uh, we love your story, and we first had you on the show. The show, boy, you inspired us. But let's tell the people now, because we are now airing in 12 countries, uh, more places than way back then when it was just Arlington, Massachusetts, and we want to uh, talk about the story again. First of all, you were the youngest broadcaster ever for the Red Sox, right? I was a young broadcaster for the Red Sox, and to my understanding, and you got to be technical, so it's a big deal to me. Yeah. My birthday's in May. Yeah. Anyone who's a Major League Baseball fan knows that the baseball season starts in April. Yep. Uh, yeah, in April. So when I started with broadcasting, I was 17 years old. At 17, I was the youngest broadcaster in baseball history. How about it, everybody? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fantastic. And one of the things uh, about you being the youngest broadcaster is that you were here when the Red Sox won in 2004. We had the big drought here in Boston, and you got to call that World Series. How special was that for you? Without a doubt, Steve, it's still the... Uh, the highlight of my career. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know that, that I still, I think, I'd like to think that I still have quite a ways to go, mm -hmm. but um, this will be my 13th season broadcasting for the Sox. And How about that, everybody? <laughs> and there's no question that the 2004 World Series is just, you, you can't be beat. It will never be beat. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a magical moment here. I'll never forget working down there and, and seeing you in the broadcast booth. Now, one thing that did happen to you uh, and it's very sad. We lost a, a, a friend, a close friend that, that we both worked with. Uh, his name was J.P. Viaman, and he was your broadcast partner. And what happened was uh, a few years after the World Series, you guys were calling a Yankees game. You came home late, and at about 3 o'clock in the morning, I believe, he was driving home but fell asleep at the wheel, ended up crashing, and he passed away. This was a real tough moment when your broadcast pa partner was there one night, and then the next night, he's gone. How did you guys deal with that situation? It's very tough. Uh, you, you know what, to a certain extent, we kind of are still dealing with it. I mean, this was, yes, my first broadcast partner of my career. Um, we shared some wonderful moments. And as, as you know, and anyone who's been involved in a business where you spend so much time together, um, they become very special to you. Mm -hmm. And JP uh, was and still is a very special person to me. He was that loving guy who... Every time he said goodbye, I had to be with a hug. Mm -hmm. um, the last time he said goodbye to me was yes. I was, I was actually the, the lucky person, the last person to uh, talk to J.P. Villaman. Mm -hmm. He gave me a hug and a kiss and say, I'll see you tomorrow, bud. And that was the last time I heard from J.P. Um, and the reason I say that we're still dealing with it is because he really was a pioneer, mm -hmm. in, in a sense, to us. Uh, the Spanish broadcast in Boston really uh, had a hard time going mm -hmm. until uh, the late 90s. And J.P. Villamon was one of the first guys to really uh, form it, mm -hmm. to really make it uh, or help make it what it is today. Um, and we'll never forget J.P. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a tough blow for myself. And one of the things that I do want to add is that it wasn't even a couple of years after we won the World Series. We called the broadcast, the, um, the 2004 World Series, together in, uh, in October of 2004. Uh, and J.P. Villamon passed away in May of 2005. Mm. So he and, and you know what? What's interesting is I'll never forget the day we found out. It was the next day, and I went to work that day, and someone had told me, and I was shocked. And I and I went into the broadcast booth, and in Juan Oscar, you, the, the other members of the broadcast, I mean, we were just all, um, you know, together, and and we were very upset. But uh, to celebrate JP, you're right. He was a very nice guy. He always made you feel welcome. I can hear his voice to this day because. When I went in there, he would yell my name. Uh, no matter who you were, he would just yell your name when you came in the room. 
I don't think he ever yelled Steve. <laughs> I, th- I don't think he ever yelled Steve. Uh, I mean, I didn't know your name was Steve until this show got started. So, <laughs> we always called you a gato. You were a gato to us. That's, what That's right, everybody. Yeah, if you didn't know this, I, I did work for the Spanish broadcast for years, <laughs> and my name was El Gato. It's muy yeah. popular. Es tiempo para el momento clave. <laughs> Me llamo el gato. How about it, everybody? <laughs> That's right. I, I, I think most people thought I was a short Mexican guy, but I was really just a tall Greek dude who couldn't speak Spanish. <laughs> Pretty similar. Yeah. Pretty similar. You, you, uh, you not only have called the Red Sox in your career, but you've called some international uh, baseball games for the MLB. I've, done, uh, I've been lucky enough to, uh, well, A, to be doing it for 13 years now, and mm-hmm. B, to have gotten some really cool opportunities. I've broadcasted, yes, international games for, uh, for the MLB network. I've done the uh, Caribbean a uh, series from MLB Network. Mm-hmm. Um, I did that in English. I've done Spanish and English broadcasts, both nationally, local, and mm-hmm. international. And you've done television. You were on Nessun for a while. I did, I've done some television as well, yes, Nessun. I've done a lot of radio. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, I guess I can only say that I, I've been blessed, I've been lucky, and, uh, and I'm still working at it. Mm-hmm. Well, but before we go, we do have to mention this. You are an advocate for the Jimmy Fund. And we first had you on the show, we had the great story of you. You came from Panama up to Boston to be at uh, Dana-Farber because you were fighting cancer. Now, as a child, you met some Red Sox players and broadcasters in the hospital, and that eventually led to you when you were old enough, 17, uh, to go get a job with the Red Sox and become a broadcaster. So you have a great story of connection there through the Jimmy Fund. And, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that we mentioned who you met there in the hospital that kind of was your connection. Now he's still your buddy and he's in the next booth over, right? He is Joe Castiglione, that's right. 30 years as the uh, voice of the Red Sox. How Joe about that, everybody? Joe Castiglione. And um, he, Joe is absolutely a, a, you know, a wonderful human being. Mm-hmm. I, I consider him kind of a second father. He's been there. I, I met him, or we met when I was 12. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was 13, he started bringing, him around, bringing me around the ballpark and uh, started pretty much just... Um, uh, getting me involved mm-hmm. and, and really uh, helped me fall in love with what is the, uh, the art of broadcasting a mm-hmm. baseball game. That's awesome. Thank you. And uh, it's great that you guys work together now. How about this, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I do want to make the announcement now that on June 23rd, 2013, we will have our fourth anniversary show. And in honor of our friendship with Yuri Barringer, we're raising money for the Jimmy Fund. How about it, everybody? <laughs> Uh, so, whether you know it or not, uh, you affected me and my volunteer group when we first met because they've wanted to do this every year, and we appreciate the heck out of you. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Yuri Barringer. Thank you so much. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Woo! 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 Woo!